Yes, and that was my mistake. I said Washington. I meant to not mean. That was a mistake. No, I'm sorry. It is DC. It is, is it DC? My bad. Okay. It's DC. I trusted you so much. I figured. And you're you were right. right. <laughs> you're right. The conference is already known. Yeah. But 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 the conference already has been identified as yes. as a. Yeah. Governor, there are two presidential rallies expected to take place in Cleveland tomorrow. Do you have? Are you advising? I, I look. I, I you know I'm the last person to in, in any way uh, advise another politician what to do, uh, but. I would simply say that uh, a, a gathering of a lot of people is probably not a great idea. They have the right to do it. It's the First Amendment. Uh, we're not going to block people from doing that. But I think, you know, certainly if you're, you're, you're elderly, if you have any of the things that Dr. Acton talked about, I wouldn't be going. Uh, and I think if it, you know, if these are, again, I'm not trying to dampen crowds down in any way, uh, but I think I would think long and hard about it. Doctor? You know, I, I think this situation is evolving hourly, and I suspect that many, many people, as we watch what's happening in the United States today, um, are rethinking a lot of decisions. So I, I suspect much will happen voluntarily as time goes on. For these high-risk groups, you want to avoid crowds. You do. Um, for normal, healthy folks, if you're in and out of a place and you're still washing your hands, taking all the precautions we've been talking about all along, you, you can still do that. But I think what we're seeing here, guys, it's imperfect because we've not been through this. This is a once in a 50 year situation and we're seeing sort of the psyche of the whole country wake up to this and adjust moment by moment. And I think we'll just, it's gonna be like this, very inexact and I, I think we'll see much more of this. And I think one thing Dr. Acton said is, is, is very important, at least as she has explained it to me. Remember, I'm the guy that got D in science, so I'm not. But if you live in a house with someone who is elderly, uh, you need to be extra careful. Yeah. Doctor, are you testifying or testing for any suspected cases of community spread? Um, yes, Randy. Um, when we did our press conference uh, this weekend, we talked about taking a three-pronged approach. We have to know that there's a limited um, supply of testing. Um, those resources are growing by the day. We're already in the queue to get more reagent, but when we received our first uh, shipment, it was for about 300 to 400 people testing. We're doing well with that now because, you know, we're just beginning. Um, we're taking um, the highest risk folks, the private labs are taking some of the more low risk outpatient folks, but um, we had a third prong to our strategy in Ohio. We're doing some sentinel surveillance, which means we're looking for clusters. And we do that based on our influenza like illness um, federal program that surveys for things. And if we see something, per, a, a good example would be if we saw in a nursing home where there are a lot of folks with respiratory illness and they were testing negative for flu, to me that would be suspicious and we would do some, some look at that as well. So we're, we're looking as rapidly as we can at community spread and, and we're assuming you know, it's here in some form. Let's go over here first. So, <laughs> being 54 and, but I mean, he thinks I'm, Young one, so, so you know, what the initial data is seeing, and if you look at a World Health Organization um, study that just came out, I have the graphs but not on me, literally you can watch it climb up the age ladder. So the flu, we've often said that, that the rate of uh, our mortality is being around somewhere around 0.1. We said that this disease, people are saying between 1 and 3%. Um, we know that SARS was worse, MERS worse yet, and so we have this sort of scale. We, not, we have to realize this. If you are 40 to 50 years old, and if flu is 0.1, the numbers in some of these preliminary studies are 0.4. And folks are starting to do the math on this. And they're saying that means that middle-aged people are at a much higher risk than they are for the flu. And I think you'll be hearing some of these numbers come out shortly. And so that's very, very important. I'm going to explain something. It's a little bit complicated, but the data on these countries like Italy, even South Korea, are lagging because by the time a case is diagnosed, it's going to be sometimes on average 9 to 12 days before that person is hospitalized. 
if someone turns for the worse. Deaths from this disease are being delayed by three to six weeks. So we just don't know enough yet. But we know that it is increasingly risky the older you get. And if you are already having health conditions, and again, we're talking about a respiratory disease. And for people at home, again, most people still will, will do well. They'll Searching for the perfect family ski vacation? Find it with Verbo. They search mill home again. Most people still will, will do well. They'll ride this out. But for some of the high risk groups, you should contact your doctor sooner than later, even earlier in the illness if you're in the high risk group. If you're elderly, if you're in this group of high risk people, or if you're a healthcare worker that has been in contact with someone suspected or known, or someone with that travel history, you should talk to your doctor sooner than later in your symptoms. Governor, the, the president often does a, um, a rally or a swing through a state just before a primary. Are you, have you asked him not to come to Ohio before the 7th? No, I'm not. I've not asked the president not to come to Ohio. Um, just, we just got this news. And, now, look, look. I think you have to be very careful uh, when, when we're talking about the First Amendment, people's rights to, to do things. And, and that's what I said about the, the, the two Democrat candidates who apparently are having a rally. Look, can't tell people not to go to that. We can't tell them not to. We shouldn't tell them not to have it. I'm just saying that it, you know, certain people with, at high risk, you probably need to be very careful about that. And, and I, I will say, um, and that's just true for all events. So this isn't about no. polit political. This is using common sense as citizens and as we learn more. And again, we have such good information for you. I can tell you that. It's very, very important that we vote, and we're working closely. Our, the governor's task force and his team are working closely with the Secretary of State. I know the Secretary of State will be speaking to this tomorrow. We want to make sure it's healthy for people to vote, and they're taking, you know, I'll let him explain that more to you, but we're giving great advice to the Secretary of State on how to do this and do this well so people can vote. And you can still vote. Um, there still is early voting. Um, VoteOhio.gov is the Secretary of State's website, so you can learn more about this. But it's very important we all vote, and, and you'll be hearing more about that. I can add something to this a little bit. Um, finally, something I'm qualified to discuss, right? The, the, you can still vote by mail. Uh, voting by mail is an option that I would encourage everybody to take advantage of. Uh, there is time to still do that. Uh, don't worry about your vote not being counted. As so long as it's postmarked by election day, your your vote will be counted, uh, and there's still time to do that. So I, I would highly encourage people who are in those vulnerable populations, and for the sake of of the uh, uh, integrity of the system, that you might want to consider voting by mail. Okay, we will be back when we know more things. Um, Amy, anything else? My only thing would be to be good to each other. There are a lot of people who are scared. There's a lot of fear, and there's a lot we can do to, to help each other. So, so we're going to do this together in Ohio. Thank you all very much. And, and again, it is at 3.35 on Monday afternoon. You've been watching a news conference, portions of a news conference. Governor Mike DeWine, Dr. Amy Acton, and Attorney General Dave Yost telling us that there is now, there are now three cases of coronavirus uncovered in Ohio. All three are in Cuyahoga County. Again, Russ Mitchell along with our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins. Monica, what do we know at this point? What we do know is that the governor did declare a state of an emergency. Now, all that is is a legal necessity that would allow state departments and agencies to better coordinate their legal response or their mm -hmm. their activated response sure. and how to handle this. And, and that's just something that would typically happen in a case like this. Hospitals are prepared. Everyone is prepared. We're waiting right now for the city and the county to announce their plan, but everybody has known this has been coming. Right. So we've we've planned for this. We do have emergency mm -hmm. response plans. Yeah. We know how it's going to, to happen, and we've planned for this as we would a huge flu pandemic. So well, 
we know what's coming, we know it's now here, yeah. and we know what to do about it. Ohio, the 36th state where coronavirus has exactly. has has been has has been uncovered, I, I guess I should say. As you said, we were waiting for this. We knew yes. this was going to happen at and, some point. And to put it in perspective, you know, we still have, um, you know, there there are now, I, I just lost count mm. here, how many um, how many uh, total deaths of coronavirus in the nation? There's 19. Yeah. And deaths were, uh, in Cuyahoga County of flu mm. are 19. Okay. So let's put it in perspective when, when you mm. look at that. And, and we're talking mm. thousands and thousands of uh, influenza mm. cases mm. compared to coronavirus. As Monica pointed out a second ago, we've been waiting for a news conference from the mayor. This was previously scheduled. They are announcing their plans in city and county for the coronavirus epidemic at this point. Let's listen to the mayor. We were going to do. Uh, but I do want you to understand that as Terry Allen comes forward, who's commissioner of uh, the county health department, that we are prepared. Not only are we prepared, we are ready, and that uh, if you have any questions around that preparedness or that readiness, we have people here who can answer uh, those questions. But to uh, update you on what has currently happened, then uh, Commissioner Allen from the County Health Department will speak. Thank you, Mayor Jackson, and thank you, County Executive Armin Budis. We've just learned that three persons under investigation for COVID-19 have become three confirmed cases based on testing that was completed at the Ohio Department of Health. The age range of the cases is 54 to 56, two males and one female. They are residents of Cuyahoga County and live outside of the city of Cleveland. All are currently quarantined at home. Following CDC guidelines, a total of six close contacts are quarantined at home as well. The health department will be conducting contact tracing of individuals who came in close contact with these patients. There are zero hospitalizations at this time. These cases have all had travel history outside of the state of Ohio. Two were on a trip in Egypt. One was at a conference in Washington, D.C. Working as we have in every emergency to date, we've combined city county together in an emergency operations center that's open to respond to the COVID-19 situation. The process we've been put in place for both public health and hospitals has worked in the past as we work together to address this evolving situation. People shouldn't be nervous. People should be ready. People should get educated. There's lots of information out there about how to deal with COVID-19 and to protect yourself, your family, your coworkers. If you have immediate questions, the State Health Department has established a hotline. The number is 1-833, the number 4, Ask Ohio. I'll repeat it again. The number is, excuse me, I need to uh, fix that. 1-833-4-ASK-O-D-H. 1-833-4-ASK-O-D-H. Now I'm going to hand the mic over to EMS that will speak to the protocols of transporting to the hospital should these individuals experience symptoms or get sick. Good afternoon. I'm Commander Christopher Chapin from Cleveland EMS. Uh, we do have protocols in place to transport these patients. Uh, they are in place to protect the safety of the crew and to ensure that all people involved are, tra are treated appropriately and that the sick are treated and transported appropriately to the appropriate facility. Um, we do have special respiratory protection for our uh, Providers, uh, they have all been trained, retrained. Again, they are all brand new devices. Uh, they exceed what is recommended for this crisis. And um, that is all. We are ready and we will be prepared if anything happens. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes, I can't hear you. I don't have the specific dates for these individuals. We do know that as soon as we were aware of them, 
they were immediately uh, home quarantined. And as symptoms develop for those that had close contacts, they will be monitored for uh, if symptoms arise. So this is what public health does in these circumstances. We first identify, we identify where there may be cases of concern. We then diagnose, we diagnose. And if we have positive cases, we then isolate people who are sick or quarantine those that aren't sick that may have con come in contact with the case. And then we contact trace. That means we identify people that had close contact, six feet, coughing very close with these individuals that may be at risk so that they can be self-quarantined. This is what we use for measles. This is what they do for TB. This is a standard shoe leather public health response, and that's how we're handling this as well. No, no, no decision on, the, on large events yet. We're, we're going to do this day by day, and, and we will do whatever is recommended to us by the CDC based on whatever facts come forward. And if necessary, we will cancel. But as of right now, there is no cancellation. Hey, yes. Um, the gentleman from EMS mentioned that there were, there's new safety here. Yes. Well, um, the quick answer, I think, is yes. We, Go ahead. They have it on the vehicle. They have it on every vehicle? We, we have it on every vehicle for EMS providers. Uh, fire and police, they have their own PPE. But what we have, what I was speaking directly to, is we have on our trucks for EMS providers, and we actually have a few extras. Uh, but what I was speaking to is for us. Uh, we are assisting police and fire and if they need any. But as of right now, it looks like everything is under control. What kind of contact did uh, those people who tested positive had with the greater community outside the six close contacts are already quarantined? When we found out about these uh, individuals of concern, their advice to self-quarantine as soon as we made aware. We then talked to them about close contacts. Where have they been within some distance of people where there may have been risk? So we've identified these six folks that are now currently home quarantined because they have identified that close contact of concern. So we're going to watch them and see if they have symptoms to make a determination on whether we need to test them going forward. If they don't have symptoms and they're fine, at the end of that 14-day quarantine period, they'll be able to go about their lives. So our job is to sort of listen in, stay in contact with the cases, and if any other people of concern develop, we will follow the same process of identifying, diagnosing, uh, 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 the other piece around um, contact tracing and isolation and quarantine. Those pieces are all together. So we will we'll follow that same procedure. Do we know what kind of public places they were in uh, in addition to the contact with those six people who were also quarantined? Well, we would have walked through them individually and determined if they were in public places whether they had any contacts that would warrant concern in terms of exposure. Remember, these folks all got exposed outside of the state of Ohio. In fact, they, uh, the exposures are, you know, at a conference and then in Egypt. So what it tells us is that we're not dealing with a situation where they got exposed here locally. So people need to understand that. We know that this is where public health kicks in so that we can try to prevent spread uh, here in greater Cleveland. And that's what we've been doing. Well, we think right now, overall, we're seeing the concern about COVID-19 uh, uh, across the United States. We think overall, people, there are things that people can do to limit their risk. This is brand new. It's a new virus. It's never actually resided in a human, right? So we're not sure exactly how it will behave. We're learning in real time. We know it transmits. For every person that may get sick, maybe two or three people could. A little bit more than flu. Right? So we're aware of that. We can understand those, those components. So we want people to do the first thing that public health tells them to do, right? We tell them to wash their hands. 20 seconds, soap and water. Exactly. Wash your hands. Stay home if you're sick. We want to make sure that you're cleaning surfaces thoroughly, door handles, cleaning shared computer terminals at work. Stay home when you're sick. 
perhaps opportunities for people to consider as we go forward if this expands to work remotely, look at telework opportunities. So there's a few other pieces that I think are critical. Who's most at risk? Who's most at risk? We're talking about seniors. We're talking about people with chronic illnesses like heart disease or diabetes. We're talking about people with reduced lung function. We're talking about people that may have immune suppression because they're on cancer treatment. These are the folks that we're concerned about. We aren't seeing a lot of kids. We aren't seeing a lot of kids. So it's important to know that 80% of folks, based on a large data set from China, the indication is that their symptoms will be mild. So that's, that's based on a large data set. We want to concentrate on our most at-risk folks. We also want to make sure that people aren't buying personal protective equipment on the internet. We need it, it needs to be saved for our first responders, EMS, and for our hospital personnel so that they can protect themselves because they're caring for individuals uh, that may be ill. Right, so what we know right now is over the weekend it was announced that by the Ohio Department of Health that they have a new testing protocol. So let me talk a little bit about that protocol. The state health department currently has the capacity to test 300 or 400 people. Additionally, we now know that there are a couple companies across the country that are putting out private tests that can do uh, much more testing around the entire country through clinical settings, through hospitals, et cetera, primary care practices. They can do testing in those situations that will greatly expand the testing capacity. Those that are most sick, those that have exposure to somebody who may have COVID-19, those that may have been exposed to somebody who traveled to one of the countries of concern, they are gonna be tested if they're sick, they're gonna be tested first, and they would be funneled to the state health department. Those that aren't quite as ill, uh, but are concerned based on uh, other indications in the, in the uh, protocol that the state has recently uh, released, what will happen is that then they'll get tested through these private companies through their clinical provider. We don't think people should be flooding in asking for testing because they're worried. We want to make sure the tests that are available right now are available for those that are at risk. That's very important. Go, excuse me, ma'am, go ahead. The six people are associated with these three, yes. Uh, no. That's correct. Uh, I don't believe so, but I don't have that uh, for a fact. They're outside of the city of Cleveland. I don't have the exact locations at this time. Oh, excuse me, sir, go ahead. Right, sir, that's correct. So, so we have been tracking, now the number is probably approaching 260 people across the state, working hand in hand with the state health department and the CDC. Travelers come back from areas of concern. Maybe it's Italy, maybe it's China, for instance. So they're coming back from areas of concern. Immediately we are made aware of this, work with the state health department, and those folks will self-quarantine at home and they'll monitor for symptoms. Remember, quarantine is for healthy people that may be exposed and isolation is for people that are sick, so they don't expose. So that's been happening right along oh, since the uh, emergency declaration that happened at the beginning of the month. So we continue to monitor people as uh, they emerge and as they come back from travel. And the idea here is that we are trying to contain this. We're in a containment mode by having them stay home, relax, watch some Netflix, let some time pass and watch for symptoms. We're able to prevent spread in the community as I said, this is done with tuberculosis, it's done with measles. These are standard public health protocols. Yes, ma'am. So they are in contact with their health care providers as need be. Right now, they're in a position where they can stay home and isolate, and so that's a good thing. But of course, they will continue to stay in touch with their health care providers as necessary. Yes, ma'am. You said those are online right now? So there are some that are standing up now. There are actually two labs uh, that I'm aware of. There may be others that our clinical partners can share. One is called LabCorp and one is called Quest. And so some are 
in the process of either standing up or will stand up soon those capacities. Yes, as well as other places around the country. Ma'am, you had a question back here. Yeah, I don't have I don't have that information at this time. I don't I don't have that information at this time. I do not. But definitely not. I, I don't know the age range. My name is Terry Allen. I'm the health commissioner at the Cuyahoga County Board of Health. So this is a fluid situation, and we're going to keep you updated as we go forward. These are the first cases in Ohio, here in Cuyahoga County, and we learned about them as you're learning about them. And so just the last piece, I'm sorry, Ginger. The last piece is that is that uh, we can anticipate more cases in the state of Ohio. Testing is ramping up, and as we seek, we will find cases in Ohio. What we're going to be doing, as we have since post-9-11 with anthrax, with smallpox, with H1N1 flu in 2009 and 2010, with Ebola, together, city, county, hospital systems, safety forces, we're going to respond together. We're going to work together. We're going to make sure the public has the best information available to them to assure that we move in response to this in unison, and that works. I've been doing this for 30 years, and that works. Well, we'll be communicating together through the Joint Information Center that is part of the Emergency Operations Center that is being established uh, at the county. Yes, sir. So I would say right now, I'll repeat something I said earlier, is this is a brand new virus in terms of human exposure. It's in animals, it's been found in bats uh, in China. We've all read that and heard that in the newspapers. So now it's in a human host. So we're not sure how it's going to behave. We don't know if the weather changes, if it will diminish. Only time will tell. Our job is to understand that this is not a sprint, that this is a marathon, and we're treating it as such. Specifically to that, Brian, come on, come. Brian Lane, the um, executive director of the Center for Health Affairs, is going to address this question. I appreciate the question. Um, the hospitals uh, have enough specialized equipment right now to take care of the patients, and we're keeping the state uh, uh, health department informed about supplies of specialized equipment like masks, gowns, and gloves. The Ohio, the Ohio uh, Department of Health is uh, communication is direct communication with the CDC about the equipment and supplies, and the federal government is currently working with all manufacturers to get more of it in the hands of all the different health care providers. You're talking like from, from a, a family and, and, and patient perspective out, out in the field? We, we do. What is that capacity? I, I, I don't have that, that number for you specifically. Over the last, essentially over a month now, since this all began at the beginning of February when the travel uh, changes occurred, We've been working in close contact. Health departments across the entire country, the Cleveland Department of Public Health, the Cuyahoga County Board of Health, we've been in contact with travelers, stay in touch with them during their quarantine period. People have been very supporting and willing to quarantine. They don't want to expose uh, other people, their family members, and the like. And so we've had good cooperation for quarantine uh, to date, and I think people understand the importance of trying to be part of the solution in addressing this situation.
I'm aware that their efforts have been made to step up cleaning, uh, hand sanitizer and the like at the Board of Elections uh, to address that. We certainly want people to vote. Um, beyond that, I don't know if there's any additional information, but I know that that's already taken place to take some precautions. You got one more? One more. Yes. Come on, come on, come on up. Come on. Well, that, that's, uh, that's uh, a, a call based on facts and information and intelligence. So it would be a group of people. Ultimately, I guess I will say yes or no, but it will not just be because I want to do it. It will be based on some facts and some um, evidence of something that requires us to do that. Okay? Well, I thank you very much. Thank you. and call this number. It's 833-4-ASK-ODH. 833-4-ASK-ODH and they will answer any of your questions whatsoever. We have long known this is coming. Right. And yeah. now it's here. We still have five more people who are still persons under investigation. Mm -hmm. We have 11 people who've tested negative. This is not the end. There's going to be more and more mm -hmm. cases coming. Uh, Ohio is now the 36th state in the nation to now claim mm -hmm. cases of of coronavirus. Um, again, though, I, I have worked with Terry Allen, whom you, you just him, saw. Uh, Health Commissioner Terry Allen. Literally for 22 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. They have worked on plans. We've gone through this with H1N1, swine flu, bird flu. Uh, when After 9-11, we dealt with this with smallpox. We've dealt with this with SARS and MERS and everything right. else. So although this, this virus is something that we're not used to, we haven't seen before, this is something that th we have planned for before. Right. And um, so these are people that know what they're doing. Um, the hospitals have planned for, everybody has a protocol for this. Mm -hmm. And um, so no one needs to panic. Is what I'm, this is not the zombie apocalypse, okay? <laughs> We're gonna be okay. Right. And this is something that uh, the best mm -hmm. advice we can give you is what we've been telling you is seriously, wash your hands, perfect hand hygiene. Mm -hmm. Do not touch your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Get in the habit of doing that. I know I just said that to you and you're probably thinking your face just got itchy. Use a tissue. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. And then throw it away. And wash your hands. And remember, your hands are only clean until you touch another contaminated surface. As we heard Terry Allen say in the news conference, there are going to be more cases yes. uh, in Ohio. He called this Definitely. a marathon and not a sprint. And as you said, he said they are ready for those things. There are a number of things happening throughout the course of the, of the week here in, in Cleveland. And one of the questions was, do you cancel events because mm -hmm. of these. And tomorrow night, uh, both Democratic presidential contenders, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, are set to appear in rallies here mm -hmm. in Cleveland. And Governor DeWine actually addressed that in his news conference earlier today. Let's hear what he had to say. Um, as we talked about on Saturday, uh, life is full of risk. Uh, but we take precautions in, in our lives every day. Life every day. But what's happened is the game has changed on us. And, and, and so we've got a bigger risk out there than, than, than we've had in the past, and we have to, you know, uh, treat that appropriately. And, and, you know, we need to treat this disease, this problem, with a lot of respect. I'm the last person to, in, in any way, uh, advise another politician what to do, uh, but I would simply say that uh, a, a gathering of a lot of people is probably not a great idea. They have the right to do it. It's the First Amendment. Uh, we're not going to block people from doing that. 
but I think you know certainly if you're, you're, you're elderly, if you have any of the things that Dr. Atkin talked about, I wouldn't be going. And again, those events still on, and we don't know of any cancellations of other events here, but the, the governor's words, I guess, are going to be well taken, not only by those folks, but by other people as well. That's right. And, and again, it comes down mm -hmm. to common sense. Everybody mm -hmm. needs to use common sense. If you are sick, please stay home. Um, if, if you're traveling, you know, anywhere out of the country, obviously check the CDC website. Right. They do have travel uh, warnings up. They do you know, you can just click on it and find out if the area that you are going to, if it's international, if there is a threat warning. As of right now, there is no domestic travel warning. So for right. those people who are traveling somewhere in the States, as of right now, you don't have to worry. But if you are concerned, contact the local health department of where you're going. And that's yeah. an easy thing for you to do. Sure. And a number of cases, a number, number, number of things we've seen today that have just shown the gravity of the situation. Again, we don't want to scare people. Please, you know, this is facts, not fear. We're trying to tell you about the stock market this morning. Drops 1,800 points on fear of this. They have to close the stock market for a while. For a while. Also, the... Prime Minister of Israel is saying anyone who comes into the country, if you are a citizen or not, will be quarantined for 14 days. So the gravity of this being felt around the world more and more on a daily basis. And I also want to bring in some, some a little bit of, you know, better news. You know, the governor did mention we have LabCorp, we have Quest Diagnostics in Ohio who are also now currently testing. And right. of course, the state mm -hmm. has its testing facilities up and running. And in a couple of weeks, Cleveland Clinic will have its facility up and running. And UH says they're going to start testing as well. What that means is that we'll get test results back in 24 to 48 hours. So that will mm -hmm. ease a lot of concern. You know, we'll mm -hmm. know quicker. Right. As opposed to five days exactly. is what they were learning before. Exactly, which is what uh, we've been waiting for when we knew that we had eight people on the list waiting to find out sure. you know, what was happening. Let us reset for people here. It is a 4.03 on Monday afternoon, West Mitchell, along with our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins. We have broken on the air to tell you about developing news here in, in Cleveland. Three coronavirus cases have been confirmed in Cuyahoga County. We all know, we know that three of them, all three, are home. They have been quarantined. They came in contact with six people. They have been self-quarantined. We went two of the cases were on it. Two of these people were on trips to the Nile in yes. Egypt, and that's what we know. Yes. And the third person went to a conference in Washington, D.C. That's right. And all of the people that they have been in contact with, the health department is talking to them, making sure that they are self quarantining, staying home. And anybody who has questions about this, they can call ODH, pick up the phone. 833 for Ask ODH is the hotline number that has been established. If you're concerned that whatsoever, you have any questions, just pick up the phone. Also, don't mean to scare you. This is facts, not fear. But there has been a state of emergency declared by the governor. Now, all that means, right. it is a legal necessity to allow state agencies and um, you know other state departments to better coordinate their response efforts. So mm -hmm. it just kind of clears the way, gets rid of the sure. red tape. That's mm -hmm. all. That's all that means. Other thing we're hearing from our people here, and this is this is good news. The people who have been confirmed these cases, we are told they are not sick enough right. for the hospital. So this, so them being home quarantine is, is a precaution to them. And only. that's and that's incredibly important too, because we know mm -hmm. that you know based on what we've seen around the world, that you know there are you know while this virus can be very dangerous to people with under underlying health conditions. We've seen it, you know, be dangerous with people with heart disease and diabetes and anybody with a respiratory uh, issue could be at risk and we've seen it infect typically older people. Um, younger, healthier people don't seem to be at risk and we've seen it very, very um, mm -hmm. rarely in children. So the bottom line is if, if you are concerned about this and you have an underlying health condition and you're not managing it, now is the time to maybe see your doctor, talk to your doctor about getting your diabetes in check, getting your heart disease in check, making, making sure your medications are uh, you know, really up to date and making sure you have enough medication mm -hmm. in check. Yeah. So these are things you need to, and, and you know, I'll, I'm gonna say this because I'm the health reporter, but <laughs> if you ever needed a, a reason to quit smoking, now's the time. <laughs> you and I watched this news conference here, and as you said, you've known health director Terry Allen for a long time. What, what, what did he say that struck you the most? 
Yeah. Honestly, we we're ready. Yeah. We've been ready. Mm -hmm. You know, and th and that's and I've seen that because I've worked with Terry for so many years and I've gone through so many plans and pandemic plans and and you know I I've seen how the emergency response um, efforts and plans have changed with each. Mm -hmm. Uh, issue that we have come through. I, I know that they are, this is not something that they just like make a plan and they throw it in a file cabinet. Right. It is constantly being worked mm -hmm. on and they're constantly working on worst case scenario. And in the big scheme of things, this really isn't the worst case scenario. Right, of course. So right. this is something that, you know, they, they knew it was mm -hmm. coming and we saw this when we were dealing with um, H1N1 and, and, and mm -hmm. also swine flu back in uh, 2009, mm -hmm. you know, we saw situations where we had tents set up outside of hospitals so we could separate patients. And, and any patient who was coming to the hospital with, with flu-like symptoms, they had to go into a separate area. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, wouldn't be unreasonable to see that again. Sure. And we're going to see more cases. That's not unreasonable. And and if if Mother Nature is kind to us, and we see the weather get better, and we see more days like today mm -hmm. and yesterday, um, it wouldn't surprise me if we do see a dip in cases. But you're worried about next flu season. I'm very right? worried about okay. next flu season. This right. is not going away. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's going to be a while until we do have a vaccine ready. So this is something where you know we keep telling you that hand hygiene, wash your hands 20 seconds. And, and use that hand sanitizer if you can mm -hmm. get a hold of it, <laughs> you know, right. at these days. Yeah, um, you can't find a lot of places Yeah, these days, make right? your own yeah. then, follow, follow instructions. Mm -hmm. But at, at the same mm -hmm. time, those are the easiest, simple things and mm -hmm. use common sense, Yeah, you know. One of the things that Terry Allen said that struck me was they were learning about this really in real time. Yes. Gonna, people at home were gonna say, how long have they known that there were these three cases here in Cuyahoga County? This all went down literally in the last 90 minutes or so. Yep. This was announced by the governor's office. The, this news conference that we just showed you with uh, Mayor Jackson and Armin Budish and Terry Allen was actually s scheduled to take place about an hour ago. They must have learned just beforehand. They did. They postponed the news conference about the, until they got information so this is happening in real time they were watching with us yeah mm -hmm. as as we were finding mm -hmm. out they were finding and and that's mm -hmm. and it's likely because odh was mm -hmm. getting the test results back from the yeah. cdc which you know you know what mm -hmm. we were waiting for so. exactly sure yeah. and, and governor dewine spoke before you saw this for probably about uh, 30 minutes to reporters and we want to hear some other words from him in the news conference as he talks about how the state is preparing has prepared for the coronavirus this afternoon, we learned that three Ohioans have tested positive for COVID-19. This is um, certainly no ordinary time. Uh, it's important for us to take aggressive action to protect Ohioans. And the actions that we take now will, in fact, save lives. And you said Governor DeWine right there. We're going to wrap up now at 4.09 and get you back to our regular programming. But here again to the headlines. Three confirmed cases of coronavirus in Cago County. All of them at home. They're under quarantine. Six people who came in contact with them home under self-quarantine. This is all for precautions, right, yes, Monica? Yes, all precautions. You have power over this. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. And again, these people, two of these people of the, of the three were on a cruise yes. in, in Egypt. The third came from a conference in Washington, D.C. There is a lot more to get to this afternoon. A developing story. Again, it's uh, coming up on 410. We're going the latest today on Channel 3 News at 5 and at 6. But for now, I'm Russ Mitchell along with Monica Robbins. We'll see you soon.